All right, I'm Sokol. Um, I'm going to go over basic uh, physics and how to uh, basically function a helicopter. Uh, I'll be going over uh, hovering and a ground effect, out of ground effect, um, how that affects the airframe, and also uh, forward flight, uh, rear flight, uh, banking turns, and also uh, approaches and decelerations. When you come up, uh, what's going to happen is the air pressure is going to push down on the ground since uh, the normal air rolls around the blades. Uh, from here, there's really no lift. All the lift is pretty much is outside of the blades. And uh, what happens when the aircraft comes up, since this is a right-sided uh, tail rotor helicopter, it's automatically, this becomes a prop. And what it wants to do is it wants to push the helicopter sideways. To, com to compensate, it has to lean into that effect so that uh, it'll stay in one spot. And that's why you always see that, you know, one side of your helicopter will always hang low. Um, to compensate from holding the stick, you can already, uh, you can rig your swash plate so it gives already that input and you won't have to compensate when it comes up. Usually what will happen when it comes up, it'll just want to push that way and then you have to compensate. So if you already put it in the swash plate, it'll pretty much come up and already want to sit with us, uh, you know, neutral sticks. All right, now the difference from in-ground effect versus out-of-ground effect. In-ground effect, you'll have, you'll have uh, more lift and more power, but you, know, you don't require as much collective versus being out-of-ground effect. Um, the reason being is you're pushing off the surface, so you have more air pressure, more of like a, think of it as a pillow of air. If it's hitting something, it creates more of a force and it can sit in it. When you're out of ground effect, it rotates around the blades in a vortex. So you're really pushing against nothing but air and kind of holding itself in the air. Um, requires more, more collective to hold it out of ground effect, but it's a little more stable out of ground effect because you're not, the air is not coming in at different angles and you have to keep compensating for the green ground effect. Uh, just the tendencies of the air hitting a surface and it could not come back in the same out of ground effect. It, just comes in a circle. It's constant, no change, other than outside forces of wind. Um, talk about wind in a hover. Now, this aircraft, the left side of the aircraft, is the clean side of the rotor system, meaning the leading edge goes into the wind, so that's clean. The dirty air is the trailing edge. So if the wind hits you from any side of this side of the aircraft, it's pretty much all lift nose, side, it's, it's, it's going to happen, it's going to push you upwards, which they call ETL or um, transitional lift. Uh, it, it's like being in forward airspeed. Forward airspeed automatically wants to make you lift like an airplane. So if, if it hits you from this side or on the back, it's going to push you down. Or if the wind comes from the top, it's going to push you down versus it coming from the bottom, pushing you up. So for yo-yoing effect, um, the aircraft will actually let you know split second before what it's going to do. You'll see it kind of shutter downwards or shutter upwards in the rotor system. You can kind of know if it's going to go up or down on you. Um, all right, well, finish covering the Why is this battery flashing, Joe? Does that mean it's getting low? I'm ready.